Hello, my delicious co-creators. Lilu here. I'm in Bali, in beautiful Indonesia, the Bali Spirit Festival. I'm sitting next to a goddess, Jody. Hello. Hello, Lilu. <laughs> Jody's from New Zealand. So hello to all the Kiwis, do we say? Kiwis. We say Kiwis. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. And um, you are an inspiration to me. And I know you're an inspiration to a lot of women. You put together this amazing, beautiful, organic cotton that feels so good. Like if we're, especially in those hot temperatures, you know. So I'm excited to learn how you put this brand together and make this dream come true. So this is happening in Bali. It's not happening in New Zealand, though. So there must be a story behind that. For sure. There's always a story, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we started, so actually the original concept for We Are, which is my brand that you're talking about, um, the original concept for it was really a development project. Uh -huh. So we needed to work in a country where we had a, sort of a developing culture as it were. Yeah. Yeah. So you chose Bali? We chose, I mean, yeah, Bali. It, it, it felt like the right place for a lot of reasons. You know, we, we wanted to work in a community where sustainable employment was relevant, where people... Um, I suppose in a way where there was space to kind of start a new project where we could test a lot of principles. So We Are came out. It was, um, I guess, in a way, a bit of an experiment for me. Yeah. I was doing a master's program in development studies, which is essentially about poverty alleviation. And I had a feeling, I mean, the coursework was beautiful, but I had a feeling it was grooming me to do like a kind of office -y type of job in the United Nations, which is not me. I've spent my life traveling, teaching and studying yoga. And I had a feeling to set up something which was a much more practical, hands-on project that allowed me to be in community and build something that felt very kind of substantial. So in a way, founding the clothing brand We Are was really a living thesis in the principles of yoga and sustainable business practice. Yeah. Well, what were some of the, the, the blockages or the things you had to overcome to, to make this happen? Because there's many. I mean, there's a finance, there is our own sense of abundance and of what, you know, of expansion too that is sometimes very scary. So mm -hmm. tell us more. Um, about the blockages specifically? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I mean... Well, I mean, there's so many if you look at it like that. But to be honest, I'm not thinking of it like that. I mean, I, f I feel like you have an idea or something that you want to do. Yes. And when you, when you feel it very passionately, yes. the whole universe gets behind you. Cool. So I think I have been the recipient of so much grace yes. in founding the brand and having it reach out to different people and touch different people's hearts. We've, from the very start, the principles of abundance, the yogic principles, the yamas and the yamas have been very, very core to how we've developed our business. Yeah. And I think in a way that um, because that's authentic, because it's coming from my heart, it's attracted other people who are also operating from their heart. Yeah. And so there's been an abundance around this brand from the yeah. first time we started. Yeah, awesome. so I, I think there's just been a lot of grace and I feel endlessly humbled. You know, yes. when you say that you love the clothes, I feel yeah. so much gratitude. Thank yeah. you so much for having the eye, for having the heart to understand what we were doing. Yeah. My body says yes and, and I think our, our whole you know soul responds to things that are made from love and we want more of that. So I'm definitely this interview is about encouraging more co-creators out there to, to, to put themselves out because there's so much to create, right? So you receive that, those. so then the, the creative process, let's talk more about that, how it, this grace, this flow, do you have some regular practices or how those, those ideas came about? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a yoga practitioner, of course, it's been a big part of my life. My mom was a yoga teacher when I was little, so yoga is definitely like my, my home in terms of having a spiritual practice and also for just maintaining the body temple, yes. maintaining vibrancy and good health. Um, So yoga, for sure, is, is the place I go. Um, I remember a woman, very inspirational for me. I was much younger, in my early 20s, and I met her in Thailand, and I was doing Jalaneti, you know, the, the saltwater cleanse of the nose. I was doing this one morning on the beach, and she came out, and she was talking to me, and she was, she was quite an elderly lady, but very sprightly and very, very good fit form, and she said, you know, yoga? Yoga's the best friend I've ever had. Ooh. And I thought, hmm, I had never really thought of yoga. I thought of it as this great healthful abundance practice, but I never thought of it as a friend. And it really stayed with me because whatever, and I'm sure you've had this experience, Lilu, like whatever state of mind that you're in when you go and practice, occasionally you still don't feel in such a great state afterwards. But, you know, 9.9 times out of 10 after you do a practice, you feel better, right? So if you have conflict, confusion, self-doubt, Go to the mat, go to your practice, you know, and for me it's always it's shifting a lot. 
yeah. Mm. And, and putting together, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the choice that you had to make, because I, I'm sure you had to make some, you know, decisions as to as far as the quality. And then, you know, we there's always, there used to be this, this balance sheet at the end for businesses to go through. So how did you made it sustainable and good for the planet and at the same time good in revenue wise so that you can expand and grow? Yeah, I mean, it's a good point because, in fact, it's great to build sustainable business, but sustainable business is only sustainable if it can support itself, right? So we also need to be aware of, like, our margins, the amount of product that we're creating and selling and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's a complexity, right? And it's not my background. I wasn't trained to do this. I have a background in anthropology, social anthropology and ecology. So I guess for me... There's never been a question of compromising um, for the human involvement, the human ecology inside our business or for the environmental processes. So mm. we do everything that we can. We come from that place and then we make it work with mm. the margins that we have. So, I mean, there's been scary moments for sure. You yeah. know, we we're like, whoa, how are we going to pull this off? But we've managed to stay independent and operating under our own steam, yeah. which allows us to make um, what I consider to be very human decisions. You know, like I think... A trap that a lot of small brands fall into is getting into credit with their suppliers. Yeah. So then what happens is they, they need to try and, um, they're trying to get more money per garment, they're trying to increase their margins and often what happens is they start to put pressure on the people who are sewing. The people who, in the end, when you look at like the, the global structure, the people who are already in quite a disempowered position in the political economy, you know, so this is where the pressure goes. So for me from the start there was never a question of that, so... We pay our suppliers on time when they finish the garments, we pay them. Yeah. And that's just an operating principle that we work on. So there are decisions. There's, I mean, there's things we do which they're not perfect yet, you know. But if you're going to wait until you were perfect, yeah. um, when would we act? When would we do something? So I guess I, I've always, you know, I really encourage people. It's like wherever you're at, just start now, you know. Yeah. Just, like, try, yeah. you know. And by having open dialogue, yeah. by sharing with your community both the successes but also the challenges, you know, like being honest, like... Yeah. We want everything to be organic, but we can't get this textile organic, you know. Maybe other people are going to come forward and they also want that textile. So you might be a small brand. Yeah. And, I mean, this obviously applies to many different types of yeah. um, business and enterprise, you know. Not just fashion, but, like, to, together we can, you know, yeah. I yeah. think. So the more people that are asking for positive, um, earth-supporting, human-empowering processes to become the norm the more normal they become yeah, yeah. so I, I think it's really about community you know yeah, yeah. And attracting the, the people with uh, f because it, like the logo is is impressive you know just I studied logo and marketing and all that and I was like wow this is red we are it stands out Thank that you. that came from you or another person that suggested it how did that work out the logo we did with a couple of good friends actually um, Morgan Sibold and Andre Jewell and it was just a yeah it was very organic we sat down on the computer it, it was a very organic process yeah I love it. It very easy but yeah. it was from the start it was right and then we've been through a few different versions of it yeah. so we're always refining and modifying it a little bit getting it cleaner and stronger and yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah it just felt right from the start yeah, yeah. And same thing for the clothes because you have all this uh, this this there's uh, quite a lot of choice actually yeah. to choose from so how does that come about so we do two full collections a year yeah. so one for autumn winter and one for spring summer and then we do little injections along the way so to, if we feel we're missing something we put a little extra thing in um, what do you, you mean? The creative you have the creative team like kind of uh, some people are working on the new design or you suggest things or how does you know how do you put this design, I do the design yeah so I mean that happens so when I have the idea or the problem I'm trying to solve I do a sketch yeah. and then I work with a team in our workshop so we have like a garment technologist and pattern makers and sample sewers so it sort of comes from my ideas and then we discuss it yeah. they make the samples we review the samples we never put anything into production without testing it on lots of different bodies because to me clothes need to be beautiful of course but they really need to work you know yeah. I mean we've got all these situations right going on our body things which don't need to come out things which need to move <laughs> things which don't need to move and it's the same for men as well as for women so yeah. once we develop something we put quite a lot of effort into the technical aspect of it as well so that it is really serving the purpose that it's been designed for yeah yeah and for men and women I noticed there's some men things yeah, too two men's yeah more and more men are getting into yoga I know, thank God, right? I mean, it's it's interesting because originally yoga, I mean, this kind of physical aspect of yoga, the asanas, and I mean, these were male practices. 
there were some women practicing yes. yoga in ancient times, but they were a very secluded sect, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, somehow, like, as yoga's developed in the Western world, it's really been picked up by women. I guess, I mean, maybe at this time in our civilization, women are more receptive and have more confidence to try new things, you know. Yeah. And it's true as well with Western, with Western bodies, like Western men tend to be a little bit less flexible on the whole than women, so it's easier for women to take it up, so yeah. But yeah, it's beautiful to see more men coming. I mean, we need we need good yeah. men in yoga, right? Yeah. Like we need good men. And are you well. supported by a man behind you, a relationship? Yeah, yeah of course I am. Yeah, mm. that helps create balance a lot. A lot of women these days have a hard time to find this match. Are you asking me if women yeah, have? A maybe, yeah. Do you notice? Is it the case in New Zealand? Are women kind of all empowered? And you know, I. I hear this from people um, wherever I travel, you know, like, oh, where are the good men or where are this? But I, I it's something about being in yourself and, and, and being honest in yourself, I think, that attracts a partner that can fulfill you because you need to know yourself to know another, right? Yeah. And you need to be able to hold yourself in wholeness and to accept yourself before you can allow another to hold you in wholeness and accept yourself. So I really think this journey of partnership is like, this is the ultimate partnership, right? Yeah. Like, like this relationship with self and, and from here, from an authentic place of loving self, then there's space for others to come in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. New Zealand, a little word on New Zealand and where it's at in its transformation or into consciousness. I, I, I keep on hearing that I must go there to do some revolutionary interviews. There's so much uh, new ideas popping from there. I mean, New Zealand's really interesting. It's a, we have a decent sized country. It's the same size as England or Japan, but we have 4 million people living there. So I think the thing that characterizes New Zealand when you arrive there is the space yeah. and the nature. So it's very clean. The air smells amazing and it's extremely beautiful, you know. So, of course, this is a beautiful place to create. Yeah. Um, I mean, New Zealand, we have our own challenges being a small economy and stuff. It's hard to get stuff off the ground sometimes. But I think Kiwis are, Kiwis are kind of innovative characters in a way. Like, I don't think we have a big culture of being em employees. Mm -hmm. Like, ki Kiwis like doing their own thing, you know. <laughs> and so there's a lot of entrepreneurs in New Zealand. So a lot of people run their own, you know, bigger or, or lot, um, smaller enterprises. But I think there is like a bit of an independent spirit, which is sometimes a negative thing, you know, like people want to do everything on their own. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> <the> <laughs> but it's also fun, you know, because so a lot of people have their own businesses in New Zealand. And in terms of the spiritual evolution, yeah. I think, um, I mean, There's something really powerful about being able to be calm in nature. You know, like we hear it again and again, like look to nature for yeah, calmness. Yeah. You know, like when you need space, where do you go? You go into nature, right? So I think in some ways we're very fortunate to have such such untouched beauty around us. You have this, um, you can stand on the land in places in New Zealand and feel like no one ever stood there before. Mm. And perhaps they didn't, mm. you know, because the indigenous population was also very small. So... There is this untouched quality there, which I think is an amazing yeah. um, energy. We connect to spirit, yeah. Totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, wherever you are, right? Yes. You're the light. Yes. Mm. Uh, magnificent. Do you have a, a last little, you know, word of wisdom or something that you want to share with women or, and men that are listening to this video? Um Last wisdom. Wisdom, I don't know, but there's something for me, like when I'm talking to you, Lilu, I can feel how present you are oh. here with me and it brings me into presence with you and it, th there's a power in that. Like I can, I can feel you yeah. as I talk to you. So maybe it's about, about being present yeah. to the people who are around you, you know, like being present with the children in your life, being present with your partner, with your co-workers, giving each other space. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Well, we send you so much love from Delicious Bali. Here the festival is happening. We hope you can come and visit one day here this beautiful island if you haven't already or come to this Bali Spirit Festival because I think it's going to keep on going and growing. Keep on going and growing for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Lovely to meet you, Lilu. Lovely yeah. to meet you too and lovely to wear all these beautiful clothes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mwah, big, big kiss to all of you, Jessica mm -hmm. Creators. Much love. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.